Remember when the majority of the people used to believe that the earth was actually flat? Sailors feared that they were going to literally fall off the face of the earth. Weird, right? How about when they thought that the earth was the center of the universe? The church believed in geocentrism because it was taught in the holy scriptures. Poor Galileo had to be accused of hearsay and put to trial for declaring that Copernicus's model, the heliocentric model that puts the sun at the center, was the actual truth. If only the church could see how we are now, so enlightened of the truth. I mean, it is the truth, right? Because the great scientists believe it. But why do you believe it? At an early age, our teachers taught us these scientific facts. The Earth and other planets each have their own orbit that revolve around the Sun. But how are you so sure that the Sun is the center of our universe? Aside from simply knowing that it is, what makes it true? Have you seen the real universe? If you haven't seen it for yourself yet, why would you believe it as a fact? You might say that the diagrams that our teachers point at show that the sun is always at the center. Of course it's a fact. Okay, so let me ask you, who came up with this model? The scientists, of course. And surely these scientists have seen the earth moving around the sun, right? Because why else would this fact be taught with such absolute authority? It's always the scientists in charge of exploring the world and formulating theories while here we are stuck on earth. So how about we do some of the work for once and see the truth for ourselves so that we can finally settle this silly argument. First, we step outside and look up. The sun rises then sets, the moon rises then sets. So far, everything seems to be moving around the earth. That can't be possible. So we take the spaceship for a quick visit to the outer space. We lift off, up and up, until we reach the orbit of the Earth. Looking down beneath the layers of clouds, we see the Earth, completely motionless. We look up and see the sun, planets, everything moving around the Earth. What the heck? Now don't freak out just yet. It's because we're in the Earth's reference frame. Now we must look from a different perspective. We fly away until we reach the orbit of the sun. Lo and behold, we see the sun perfectly still as the planets move around it. Haha, -ha, so you were right all along. But hold on, we fly to Mars and what do we see? Everything moving around it. If everything changes based on the reference point, then what are the true motions of the universe? Does it even have a true motion? Even if it did, you can't see it just by looking. And that's exactly what the church officials said. And guess what? The church was right. Maybe science itself is starting to not look so good. You might think that the problem is we need a better vantage point. Okay, let's fire our thrusters one last time and move farther away. We look out the window and back at Earth. It is a stationary dot and everything is moving around it unless we shifted our reference frame to another position and that stays still while others move. We fly back home defeated. But wait, the retrograde motion we see on other planets may prove us right after all. Inner planets close to the sun do not exhibit retrograde motion, whereas outer planets do, because our orbit around the sun is smaller. We catch up to and then pass the position of outer planets so we can see them as moving forwards then backwards. But Ptolemy's system explains this too. Especially since he developed his system to account for the same motions in the heavens. He does it with epicycles. Epicycles are each planet's circle that they orbit as they move around the Earth. Each planet, the Moon, the Sun, moves around the Earth along its red eccentric circle or what is called different while the epicycle circles its own differently. It's basically an orbit within the moon orbit. If Ptolemy has all these answers, then why did we take the Copernican system over it? It must be because it is simpler and easier to understand. 
but nothing can be further from the truth. What? Of course, Ptolemy's system looks ugly and complicated with his so-called epicycles. But no. Copernicus' system also has epicycles. The best scientific, historical, and philosophical experts cannot even agree as to who had how many. Alright, this is the last show. The sun and planets moving around the Earth is simply unimaginable and wrong. After watching the video, will you be convinced of Ptolemy's mother? Of course not, because the Copernican system is obviously the only fact there is and even questioning that is a mysterious and absolute waste of time. It would be like questioning my own mind like intellectual blasphemy. Not too long ago, the society at large accepted the judgments of bishops and priests. Now we thank the silence with its clear cut and controvertible facts that can explain everything. We are much more enlightened and advanced because we are open to new information compared to the oppressive ideologies of the old world. Science sobriety that helps science to see the truth is as simple as deciding whether the earth revolves around the sun or the sun revolves around the earth. But is that true? Think about how every now and then, scientists come up with theories like how the universe is an illusion or a theory that what if we discover we can see the future and more staggering theories. Every single time, they claim that they are on the verge of understanding everything. And every single time, we believe it as the final truth. Until another scientist proposes a new theory apparently also on the verge and shifts everything completely. Theories do not converge, rather, they diverge utterly and instantly without us even noticing it. This seems like a good reason to believe that whatever science claims to be true now will someday be revealed as false by future scientific views and whatever we believe now may be ridiculed by the future population for being so utterly backwards. Sounds familiar? Well, isn't it that exactly how we viewed early church beliefs in the beginning of the video? Paul Pierre Band once remarked that Christianity and science seem to always wash. Christianity and science are both expected and accepted in society. Today, if there arises an issue between science and religion, science is certainly right and Christianity is wrong. Christianity is criticized whereas science is accepted from this criticism. Science brings upon knowledge and only the truth based on empirical data and evidence. This is why scientific facts are taught us at a very early age in the same manner in which religious facts were taught only a century ago. 19th century schoolhouses in the United States used to have only news signs over the blackboard that said, Fear God, sins from heaven, and pictures of saints and hierarchy of angels. Now, they have since been replaced with pictures of great scientists like Albert Einstein, Thomas Edison, Madame Curie, and the hierarchy chart of elements. Does this mean that science has become as oppressive as the ideologies it had once defined? The science that we are heavily dependent on may be the best way to the truth. And the truth may be that God is not necessary to explain the world. But if these truths we believe today arrive in our minds through our psychological attitudes conditioned into us by scientific authorities, then we are not really convinced. Indoctrination is here carried out in a much more systematic manner. Criticism is not entirely absent. We are indoctrinated. We are members of the faith of what may be the greatest religion that has ever yet existed. And that is the Church of Science.